Hey guys, Justin here with Medicare Coach. I uh, just wanted to come to you today and talk about health reimbursement accounts. Um, it's going to be a pretty helpful, informative video, I think, because there's already been a question about it. Um, and there's some confusion about HRA versus HSA, I think. Um, so I'm going to clear that up. And I think it should be good. If you have any questions, just post them below the video. All right, so an HRA is a health reimbursement account that a lot of companies are now giving their retirees um, on Medicare to use to purchase Medicare coverage. Um, many of these companies have different di stipulations as to how they can access this health reimbursement account. Probably the biggest company I've run into is AT&T. A lot of you know my AT&T story because I've put it on here before in a podcast. Um, but I did help about 200 AT&T retirees uh, back in um, for effective date of January 2015, and uh, they had this health reimbursement account set up through Aon Hewitt. <clears throat> now, the stipulation to their account was that they have to get at least one um, product through Aon Hewitt to um, to get their HRA. Um, activated and then they could purchase other products elsewhere and still have them reimbursed um, so um, this kind of begs the question why not just do it all through Aon Hewitt it would be easier that way well there's a couple of things one they don't offer all the Medicare supplement plans um, they tend to push Medicare Advantage plans even in areas where Medicare Advantage plans aren't widely accepted and they don't know that because they're not from that area or they don't do a lot of business in that area but they just push the Medicare Advantage plan it seems like um, also, Medicare Advantage for someone on an HRA is kind of, uh, it just doesn't really make sense because if, if you have $2,700 to spend and you buy a Medicare Advantage plan, you don't spend the $2,700, but you have all these extra out-of-pocket expenses and stipulations. If a company's giving you $2,700 a year to spend, you can get your drug plan, your supplement, and dental, vision, and hearing and still have room you know, to spare for increases in the future. So it just doesn't it makes no sense to do that um, you know it might make sense for the brokerage that's doing it you know for lifetime renewals but it is not the best thing for the customer so um, so anyway I wouldn't do a Medicare Advantage plan for someone with an HRA especially at least if the HRA was a substantial amount you know um, the ones I've seen are 2700 for the retiree uh, 1500 for a spouse and then I've seen other companies do 1800 each so 1800 for the retiree, 1800 for the spouse, and some of them just do for the retiree. Um, uh, we have a, a business here called Cooper Tire that they do an HRA, and they use a company called One Exchange. And it's the same principle. You have to at least get one thing from them. So what one thing should they get? Uh, in our opinion, it's the drug plan. These, H2, these uh, management companies, HRA management companies like One Exchange and Aon, Towers Watson, tend to offer all the drug plans but they don't offer all of the Medicare supplements. They only offer, for some reason, certain companies and the prices are higher on them. So uh, normally I help my customers pick out a drug plan. I have them call the management company to get the drug plan and then we do their supplement, dental, vision, and hearing and, uh, and, and point them in the right direction on filing for reimbursement for those plans. And that's worked out very well um, for us. Um, those plans do get on auto reimbursement. Um, another reason not to do a Medicare Advantage plan, if you, if you sign them up on a Medicare Advantage plan, um, then that's you know, typically going to be their MAPD, so they're going to have their drug coverage and their supplement with you, and they're going to have a little, little bit of dental, vision, dental and vision built into it. And so um, you, you trying to throw that all-in-one approach in there is going to lose them access to their HRA because they cannot access that HRA if they didn't get at least one product from that HRA management company. That's how most of them work. Now, there is a, a caveat to that. There are a couple of companies, and I may be wrong on this one, but I think one of them is DuPont or um, it was a tire manufacturer somewhere. Anyway, they, um, they had it set up where you could not get a reimbursement at all on any product unless you got it all through that management company. So just make sure you understand the rules of the HRA that you're helping someone navigate. Um, oftentimes they are better using a broker because they we can give them more options, but make sure they're not going to lose access to that, you know, 
sum of money that they're getting, especially if it's $2,700 or $1,800. That's a lot of money for somebody on a fixed income. So uh, I think that kind of explains how the HRAs work or health reimbursement accounts. If you have any more questions, let me know. And also, um, if you uh, have any confusion about an HSA and an HRA, an HSA is just a health savings account, completely, completely different. Acronym similar, completely different concept. Um, you know, we might do a video on HSAs and how they apply to Medicare beneficiaries um, in the future. But if you have any comments, put them below. Talk to you guys later. Bye.